instrument that's being played that makes the difference, but the man who plays it. My name is Drew. Droopy. 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 Oh, Droopy, yeah. Oh, Droopy Anderson. Mrs. Droopy, it's bringing up your... Droopy! Droopy, Mr. Broke Baller himself. So tell me, what is a broke baller, and why did you choose that title for yourself? A broke baller is a person who makes something out of nothing. A person who makes a dollar out of 15 cents, makes lemonade out of a piece of lime and a packet of sweet and low. A pimp provisor. We've heard of improvising, I put a pimp on it. I put my pimp hand on it, so it's pimp revising. It's making something out of nothing, which our people have been doing in this country anyway since we got here with wonderful results creatively and in every other aspect in the genre. So that's a broke baller. For y'all ladies, y'all the broke ballerinas. <laughs> broke ballerina, broke ballerina, because you gracefully carry the art of being broke. When did you know you, you had the gift of words, you know, being able to use words so eloquently? Um, probably in high school when I was writing poetry to get girls. You know? It worked, huh? Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm just teasing. Um, Poetically, man, I've been doing this all my life. I mean, as long as I can remember, as long as I knew how to pick up a pencil, I was writing something with it, so, <laughs> all my life. It was something that, you know, I couldn't play ball. Uh -huh. I couldn't do what the young cats my age were doing, so I found something else I was interested in, and that was it. Just rainy days, staying in, you know, plotting world domination with pen and paper, you know? I guess some people would, uh, Say that you are the black Weird Al Yankovic. So, um, what makes you decide to spoof a song? What what brings what what, what makes you want to do that? Um, usually, if it's a song I really like or a song I really hate, I spoofed um, "Fanatic" by Vivian Green. Called, did a song called "Financially Afflicted." Spoof Jay Z, "Girls, Girls, Girls." Did a song called "Bills, Bills, Bills." Spoof. Jim Jones, We Fly High, ballin', make Philly. Yo, it's June. You know what a lot of our students are doing? I know this because I'm a teacher. They doing this. F-A-I-L-I, in apostrophe. Philly! Philly math, English, and biology. Philly! Can't divide, multiply, or write a resume. Philly! This is my seventh time. And but the one unifying characteristic of every song I ever spoof is it was catchy. I might like the beat and not like what they were talking about and wish that it had doper lyrics or at least more meaningful substance. Might just not like the artist and want to get at them that way. I'm a flirt, extremely catchy, well-crafted song. I had to get it. And then R. Kelly is such an easy target. I had Ooh. to get him. Had to get him. <laughs> R. Kelly is a frequent uh, target of mine, as you'll hear on the mixtape. Okay. I have my reasons for that. So um, I understand you're um, a high school teacher by day. So how do your students react to um, what you do on the side? What are the responses you get from them? See, it's funny. By me teaching biology and health right now, when you, when you rhyme and perform for your students, they want that all the time. And by me not teaching English or creative arts yet, that's something that I, is, I find challenging to juxtapose. I try to hide it, but they always find out. I got music on MySpace. You know all my kids on MySpace. I was on 106 in Park. They lost their mind. Why do I like you? I mean, it's not like you're a particularly nice person or anything. You don't tip well at restaurants. You don't even return phone calls and stuff. And you don't floss. You have too big of a butt, even for a girl, even for a black girl. I must have been drunk when I took your number, drunk when I dialed. You don't even know the name of the bad guys that G.I. Joe used to fight. Hell, you don't even know the name of the bad guys that U.S. fights. Oh, my bad, the U.S. is a bad guy. But you don't even know what I meant by that. You think you're bilingual just because you understand Sean Paul lyrics. You blow up hot pockets in my bathroom and don't clean up the mess. You blow up the bathroom, you don't even clean up the mess. You make Shady side deals to win Monopoly games. Made shadier side deals to win mine heart. Voted for Bush on purpose twice. Just because he couldn't even spell narcissistic. You are not a particularly nice freaking person. You don't return phone calls. Why do I even like you? You know what? I don't like you. I can't even stand you. I love you. I was a superhero for a month. You don't want to be a superhero to your students. It's just weird. <laughs> what do you think is missing from spoken word and hip-hop at this point in the game? I think it's missing versatility. I think it's missing diversity. I don't, I know I made a statement earlier, um, sort of getting at the snappers and the trappers, but here's the thing. I don't mind that music in context, but what I don't like is it only being the only option. We used to have more options right. in hip-hop and with spoken word. I don't mind the pro-black spoken word. 
but I don't want it to be all that I hear. I'm, I'm blacked out. Tired of black poets only doing poetry about being black and from a black perspective. I'm tired of gay poets only doing poetry about being gay. I'm tired of everybody doing poetry just from a certain perspective. My challenge to cats, write something that has nothing to do with you. Right. I was constantly returning here, but if I stay away too long, I figured I would forget what it is to be a child. This is the most perfect place on earth. It's the only playground I know that still has a miracle round. Oh God. One of those ridiculously unsafe contraptions, those metal discs that spin around at ungodly speeds while children hang their dangling heads off bandages oh and stick their arms under the rusty rails. This is a work of genius. And today, I am the engineer. And as I slowly linger out, oh motion and action replace old doubt by remembering what it is to be a child. Do you think that you are different now from when you first began your career, your growth process? When I first started um, as an artist like 10 years ago, um, and I've been an artist in some capacity all my life, but really as far as pushing the spoken word and the hip hop, I would say 10 years. I was real knee jerk. All it took was one little simple social situation or somebody say something to piss me off and I'm writing poems about it, and putting it in the newspaper and all this crazy <laughs> stuff. I've really sort of chilled out and learned that everybody's not going to like you. People going to do some things that rub you the wrong way. People going to take the, your best of intentions the wrong way. It is what it is. It is what it is. It's cliche. But it's, that's how I've really just chilled out, man, and just learned to just appreciate my blessings and work with my gifts. Who cares about the whack stuff? Right, definitely. definitely. Is, um, would you say that humor is definitely a key element of your style and your image? I would say so, and that just stems from it being a key element of my personality. I mean, that's how I am. I'm a wild cat. I have an off perspective. I think about things in kind of different ways, and I just express that through my art. That's all. Basically, my art goes through phases. Whatever I'm going through in my life, my art tends to reflect that. So it wasn't always happy-go-lucky, you know what I'm saying, always cracking jokes type of poetry. I was in a space, especially when I was doing my first book, I was in a space where I wasn't too happy about love and life, and necessarily myself. And so you would get the bitter love pieces or the right, confrontational, right. as you say, pieces. But lately, I've just been really loving life and enjoying life and wanting other people to do the same. So when you leave here in Droopy, or whatever, I want you to leave smiling. So that's where the humor comes in, because everybody likes to laugh. Everybody doesn't know that they like poetry, but everybody knows they like to laugh. And everybody doesn't know that they want to be enlightened, but everybody knows that they want to laugh. So I use something that they want to sneak them something that they need. That's my little tactic, if you will. Tomorrow my tactic might change, but for now that's my little tactic. What's in your future? What do you see happening in the next five or ten years? What's, what's in Droopy's future? Five or ten years I see myself traveling the world, performing and spreading the broke ball of message because it's very necessary. Cats need to hear it and see what I have to offer. And I think they'll enjoy it. And I'll enjoy giving it to them. I hear you. <laughs> so is there anything else you'd like to leave the audience with? Basically, and this is for you, and you, and you, and you. The name is Droopy the Broke Baller. All day, twice on Sundays, because that's when most of y'all are sleeping, so that's when I'm creeping. Coming for your town, your city, your state, your countryside, your province, your borough, your planet, whatever. I'm the host with the most. I'm a spoof king. I'm a spoken word artist supreme. And I'm just a freaking bloody great guy. I help old ladies with their groceries across the street on Sunday mornings. And that's how we do it. I'm Droopy the Broke Baller. You can check me out on MySpace backslash the Broke Baller. I say ER at the end because my mother's an English teacher. I'm not ghetto, I'm just broke. That's the deal. Love you. Close. Close. Yeah, man, this is Droopy the Broke Baller, a.k.a. Mr. Anderson. It's for all my students who know every song for every word on the radio and don't know one word off my study guide. Check this out. That's about the that's size about of it, baby.